All righty, what's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Time Out with Doc and Caveman. You are here with Dr. Fantasy, and as always, my co-host, the Fantasy Caveman. We are continuing with our NBA prospect profiles. Today, we are going to be talking about James Booknight, a 6'5", 190-pound sophomore guard coming out of the University of Yukon. Last year as a sophomore, Book Knight averaged 18.7 points, 5.7 rebounds, 44.7% from the field, 29% from three, then 77.8% from the free throw line. Caveman, what is your interesting fact on James Booknight? All right. Uh, and I almost use this same fact for a guy that we're going to we're going to cover later in Keon Johnson. But so James Booknight actually was a big baseball uh, kid growing up and did not play organized basketball until high school school which i found very interesting because he doesn't look like a guy that waited until high high school to start playing basketball so i find that kind of interesting so going into some of his strengths uh the biggest thing i like with him is just his confidence uh he 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 looks like the guy that's always willing to take the tough shot. And that's not something you see a ton of. I think you see a lot of guys coming in that are a bit, either a bit too passive or just not marked with their confidence. I think he's one of those guys that uh, I think a lot of times he has confidence to take the shot. I think it's the right play. Uh, And then I, the other thing I really like about him is he's built like my guy I created on two K. He's a three. He's a he's a pure three level scorer. I love I I love I love me some three level scorers. Uh, he can really finish around the basket. He shoots about sixty two percent from in the paint. He has a variety of moves to get there, which I think is one of the things I look for when you come to a lot of these prospects is what kind of moves do they have to get them into the paint? Because in the NBA, if you only have like one or two moves and you only go to the basket with one or two without, with the same hand or the same move, that's going to get picked up on very quickly and you're not going to be able to do anything. So he already coming in has the, has, a variety of moves and a variety of different ways to score the basketball, which is going to be big for him. And then the final thing is that he has he has to improve in this area, but he has the tools and the ability to be a above average defender at the next level. I think he's oh, not going to be here. I know. I and I feel like you're. I feel like this is something that you're not. You don't like about him. But I honestly. I see, I seen flashes, and we'll talk about it when it comes to his weaknesses, as I'm sure you will. But he's shown flashes of being a good defender. I think it's just going to come down to the willingness to put it in, put it in consistently. So, yes, yeah, and I mean, I feel like I say this a billion times every single season, but that's a reality with a lot of these players. There's a lot of tremendous athletes that have the ability to defend but it's more of just a lack of interest in defending if we want to be realistic about it so I don't have it as a strength I saw lots of other scouts say that too he has defensive potential that's not really a strength to me until he shows that he can do something with it personally so um most everything that I have is pretty much the same as you um this is a guy (laughs) that's going to be a very very effective scorer at the next level level he's shown potential to score at every level um that's a really nice looking tongue right there but uh he's very that's a nice segue into saying he's super athletic which and i mean he could arguably be the most explosive scorer in this class 
I think mm. he's up for that conversation. I'm not saying he definitely is, but you could argue he's the most explosive playmaker, not playmaker, scorer in this draft. And uh, I have some comparisons that I think are kind of interesting and kind of some high praise for him. So I can't even say that I don't like him. I see a lot of potential in him, and I think <laughs> there's a reason so he's shooting up draft boards you were messaging me about that the other night Uh this is a guy that was consistently being mocked around 15 but I think this is a guy that's 100% gonna shoot up into the top 10 on draft night he really showed up at the combine and he uh, he's shown that ability so I, I think between his athleticism his offensive ability if he can be committed to playing defense this could be an all star all-around caliber players. So he has a lot of potential, but let's talk about some of his weaknesses. I've mentioned it. You've talked about his defense a little bit. It's just a matter of him showing interest in it because when you're that athletic, you have that explosiveness. He has all the ability, as you've mentioned. It's just going out there and doing it. Um, For a guard, he's not a great playmaker. I think he's best served to be a two guard in a backcourt next to a really strong playmaker, which I will Mm -hmm. talk about in where I believe his best fits are. Um, He does Mm -hmm. turn over the ball a little little bit. He makes uh, his shot selection isn't the greatest, which kind of goes with his percentages. He kind of chucks up some pretty bad threes sometimes. And that's why a lot of scouts will say his three point consistency. I don't think it's his consistency as much as it is just his shot selection. Yeah. And I think he would be more consistent if he took better shots, because when you look at his form, he has a really nice looking shot. And he. Yeah. And I mean, when you see a 29% from three, you're going, oh boy, let's look at the shot. And I was really surprised when I first really looked at a shot and. Cool. Yeah, I mean, a- he is smooth. He really is. And uh, it's cool. one of, you know, if you haven't, go on Twitter, too. Some of his workouts from the uh, the Combine and pr- or, uh, pers- private workouts were uh, leaked on Twitter. And his form, he's worked on it even more. It's and that's why he shot up draft. Really yeah, that's why he's like the- that's why he's uh, shot up draft boards as well is because he's really worked on his footwork and making sure that because really that's a difference for me if whether he's a, just a really high level scoring guard or an all-star player comes down to if he can take better shots and become an elite level three-point shooter and I think that he can I think this is a guy that has sneaky potential to be one of the best players in this class and whether he learns how to play defense or not I mean offensively he has the potential to be a top five offensive player in this class. Yeah, and you mentioned a, a lot of it. A lot of what you said, I agree. I I pretty much agree with. Uh, I I think the turnovers. I think that's. I think all of his all of his weaknesses, like his shot selection, his just overall decision. Man, not necessarily passing the ball, just overall decision making. I think his weaknesses are something that can be corrected at the next level because you've seen it. He has all the tools. He's a true three-level scorer. So I think his weaknesses are just having – overall, I would say, to sum it up, he doesn't have great basketball IQ at times. So I think that pretty much sums it up. If he can just be smarter when he has the basketball, he has the potential – not saying he'll be an all-star every year, but he definitely has the potential to make a few all-star teams if he improves his basketball IQ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So let's go to some ideal fits. I've kind of alluded to a few, but one, we don't really know the future of some of the guards in Charlotte. So if uh, Charlotte decides they want to go out and get a long-term backcourt member, for LaMelo I think the Hornets pick 11th right now I think him and LaMelo would be really fun to watch personally yeah, not, and I think the, probably not the greatest defensive back but it's gonna force him to play defense I mean he has that ability he's gonna have to show up and play defensively if he's playing next to LaMelo offensively it'd be a lot of fun and if he does live up to his defensive potential it has the makings of one of the best backcourts in the league for a long time so um other ones orlando i think this is the perfect case of if he's sitting there at eight for orlando this is the kind of upside pick that orlando absolutely needs 
And you could very realistically be in that conversation. Orlando was my top option just because he has super, he has superstar potential in him. Mm-hmm. And Orlando, I don't even if it isn't like the necessary like best like fit like game wise or whatever, which I I think it's a good fit there too. But they just need they need a superstar and they need a potent and at eight, uh, not always a lock to get a bona fide superstar, but they he has the potential to be that. Uh, so I like I love I love the Orlando fit. Uh, another guy, another guy, another team, and a, a team that has thirty thousand first round picks. I don't even know how that's possible because there's not thirty thousand picks. But uh, <laughs> that's 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 the thunder. Uh, mm-hmm. I I like uh, I like I like it because they have a bunch. Uh, they have a bunch of younger. Uh, guys that play solid defense already, and I think uh, while he works on his uh, off defensive uh, game, he you, he could really light up. He could really light it up for him as an offensive force. Uh, pairing him with Shy in the backcourt, I think that would be I'm not saying that would be one of the best backcourts in the league, but I think it'd be very fun to watch, and I think. Uh, Definitely something that's realistic, given that I don't even know how many picks they have in the first round, but it's at least seven. Seven thousand, I think. Oh no, yeah. you, I said seven thousand. You said thirty thousand. Somewhere in between that. Somewhere between seven and thirty thousand. But I think that's another fit that uh, I would. I think I would really like to see. Yep, they were one of the ones on my list as well. I think that that is a very, very good. Um, very good fit for him. So let's go to some NBA comparisons. And one thing I want to just throw out there, I think if he was in last year's draft, he would have been the fourth overall pick. Um, I think that based on how last year's class was, I really think that highly of him. And if we're being honest, the first guy that came to mind when I was watching him was Anthony Edwards. And I know that that seems like really high praise and slash maybe criticism at the same time because I'm not the biggest Anthony Edwards fan, but I mean, Anthony Edwards showed all of his offensive potential last season, but I mean, think about what we're saying about him athletic. He scores at all three levels, has defensive potential, but doesn't play defense. They're about the same size. Anthony Edwards has more strength, but in terms of their height, their percentages were very close. I mean, he's kind of similar to Anthony Edwards in a lot of regards. And I was surprised no one else said that. Honestly, that's literally the first name that came to my mind because I was writing down strengths and weaknesses. I just kind of looked at him. I was like, (laughs) that kind of reminds me of Anthony Edwards a little bit. So I, uh, you know, the decision making, the lack of playmaking, the shot selection, All of this is what we were talking about with last year's number one overall pick. Like I said, the biggest difference, Anthony Edwards has a little more strength to his game and could bully his way into the paint a little more, where I think Book Knight can be a little more, uh, he can finesse his way. Not to say that he has more of a, has a bit more inside game. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I would agree with that. So I think Anthony Edwards is an interesting one. Uh, Another guy who very similarly, this is more the upside. I see a little bit of Bradley Beal upside offensively. Um, Bradley Beal was not the strongest three point shooter coming into the league, but we've seen improvements. His percentages still aren't fantastic. So his a lot of his stats, Bradley Beals, are really based on volume. He is really not an efficient scorer, um, really, at this point in his career. But I see some flashes of that. And the other one, I think worst case, and this is a high praise for worst case, but uh, I think Jordan Clarkson's a good one. Just yeah. a high energy, instant offense off the bench, sixth man of the year kind of contender. If he's ever not able to be more uh, careful and pick – or improve his shot selection on the whole. I think Jordan Clarkson is a realistic low end, and that's kind of saying a lot, that, honestly. That that's how that's I think that's really high praise for a guy to say. Oh, your floor, your floor, your floor is a is a consistent uh, sick guy that's always in the conversation for sixth man of the year. 
I think that's a very and I that's what I think I love about him really is that his his game is structured in a way where it's going to be extremely hard for him to fall off with his ability. And that's what I love about him. Uh, Jordan Clarkson was a name I had down. Um, Shades of Zach Levine. And just in terms of three, I I love the Zach Zach Levine comparison because I think both are very talented three-level scorers. Zach Levine uh, isn't the greatest playmaker either. Now, he can a touch. uh, And I think Book night, depending on where he goes and depending on the spot, I think he can maybe do a tiny bit of playmaking to the point where he could be similar to Zach Levine. And uh, I think now, and I see shades of Vince Carter. That's pretty high praise. Uh, just from like an explosiveness standpoint, because we, as you saw with some of the highlights, those were. That w- those were Vince Carter esque explosive explosive plays, and I, so I think I see shades of uh, Vince Carter in him as well. Yeah, that's uh, definitely high praise there. So I think that's all then for James Book Knight, which uh, a lot of praise for him. Seems like we're both pretty right. high on his offensive upside. Uh, I hope that he lives up on the defensive side. Realistically, though, if I had my guess, he probably will not. If we're being honest about it, because nobody so cares have, about defense. We had, to, we had to throw. We had to throw one more. You, we praised him too much. You had to take him down. Pat. I did a little bit because, yeah, I mean, it limits his. I mean, upside as an overall player, but he has that potential, and hopefully, gets put in a system with somebody that can knock some sense into him on the defensive end of the ball or defensive side of the ball otherwise he's going to be a very high level offensive threat in the nba so either way he's going to be successful just the level of success is going to depend on i think his shot selection and whether or not he can become a all-around defender so uh, i think that's it for book night though we're going to keep rolling on with a few more after this we're starting we're in our top 10 players now Pretty soon, we're going to be touching on our top five, so make sure you stick around for that. Subscribe on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, and we will see you guys next time. Yeah.